So trigger links inside Go High Level are basically links that we insert into Go High Level, and then uh, Go High Level will shorten that link, essentially turning them into a, a trigger link. And what's unique about them is that they track the click-throughs on these links. So how let's let's set up a, a trigger link, and then I'll show you guys how it works. So go into marketing to set this up. And marketing is going to be on the left. Of course, we're inside of a sub-account here. We're going to hit trigger links up top, and then we'll hit add link in the top right-hand corner. We can enter the name and then enter the URL. Um, I already have one, uh, an example created right here. So this is just a Google review link. And then obviously the link URL, this would be the URL redirecting to the review page. Uh, but for this example, I just use google.com. Okay. So now that we have this trigger link, what we're going to do, or one of the use cases for it is, let's see, here we are. We can actually text this out to somebody. So we could come in here and we can select uh, trigger links, which there we go. Come down here. And then now we see this trigger link that we had. And let's go ahead and send it. And this is what it looks like, right? It's, it's a shortened link um, that the user can click on. And then it will take them to uh, Google. Now, I guess. <laughs> Google's not pulling up for me, but uh, yeah, it, it, it'll take them to whatever link we have associated with this trigger link. Now, what's cool is that g because this contact just clicked on this link, or technically I clicked on the link, but if the the contact clicked on the link, it would actually show up in the activity right here, and it would say contact uh, clicked on trigger link at 5 p.m. August, whatever it is, right? So, and why that's helpful is that now we can actually attach it to workflows. So we can go into the automations if we wanted to, and let's just select a random one here. And what we could do is we could actually, under triggers, we could actually be, start a workflow when a lead clicks that link, right? And we could specify which link they need to click. Something else that we could do is we can add in a wait time uh, or a wait function, and then we could wait until they trick, uh, click on the trigger link, right? And we'll get more into this uh, in the automations, but we can say, okay, don't do anything until a lead clicks on the trigger link, and then we just specify which trigger link. And then we can add a timeout if we wanted to, which would mean if it's been, let's say, two days and they still haven't clicked on the trigger link after two days, then we can have them do something else, right? Maybe we can send a, a follow-up text, something like this, right? So trigger links are very helpful. I'll, I'll do a quick recap here. They're nice because it's a good way to send very long links. If we go into marketing and look at this, let's say we had a very long link in here, right? Instead of sending that, that entire link, see this entire thing in a text, what we can do instead is put it into a trigger link, and then it would just look like this right here much cleaner, much nicer. And on top of that, we can actually, so here we go, we can actually see that the lead clicked on the trigger link, whether they clicked on it or not. Um, and going beyond that, we can actually start workflows if they clicked on the trigger link, or we can wait uh, to do an action based off of a trigger link click. or if the system detects that they have never clicked on the trigger link, we can send a follow-up text. So very useful, uh, great little tool to have. I would definitely use it if you're running like a Google review campaign. Um, if you're running a database reactivation, you should be using it um, there. And we'll go over exactly how to uh, use it inside of a, a database reactivation in the video that sets up a DR. But yeah, you can use these for just about anything.